Did you know that in Frank Sinatra's Strangers in the Night, when he sings Dooby Dooby Doo, the creator of Scooby Doo was inspired to make the character Scooby Doo? Welcome back to Rabbit Hole History, where each week I dive into a historical topic that I'm interested in. And this week we are going to Vegas. Over the summer, I took a cross-country road trip from the west coast to the east coast and made some major stops along the way. And I figured with each stop I would make a quick little video about it. So this week I am talking about Las Vegas and the history of Vegas, and so I figured I would try to find a recipe from the heyday of Vegas in the 50s when Frank Sinatra and the Rat Pack were in charge of the Sands and the Strip. And when I was searching for different menus and maybe what they would have served back then, I found a menu from the Sands at the Copa Room, which is where Frank Sinatra famously performed. And I found this recipe for a stuffed avocado on the menu. And it was very expensive for the time period. It was probably close to $70 in 1954 dollars. And I figured I would make it. So without further ado, let's jump into the recipe. To start, your ingredients are gonna include a half pound of shrimp, a half pound of lump crab meat, one shallot, a whole head of parsley, but you're not gonna use all of it. I used two avocados split in half, a couple of radishes, juice from a lemon, and a couple stalks of celery. And from there, you're just gonna kind of dump everything into the bowl, your shrimp, your crab, your radishes, your celery, your shallot. Take a moment because it was really hard to cut. <laughs> cut a tablespoon of the parsley up, add your mayonnaise, squeeze your lemon juice in, your salt, your pepper, and your cayenne pepper, and then you're gonna mix everything together till it makes the 50s mayonnaise -y salad of your dreams. Now that we've mixed everything up, let's take a quick break and talk a little history. So let's talk about some history surrounding one of the most iconic Las Vegas hotel and casinos, The Sands. The Sands was opened in 1952, designed by the architect Wayne McAllister, and it was the seventh resort to open up on the Strip, and during its heyday, obviously it was home to many of the world's most well-known performers, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr. And back in the day when Las Vegas was first coming up, as we know, it was very seedy and run by crime mafia bosses. So naturally, the owners of the Sands attracted our one and only Frank Sinatra, who began staying there because of his connections to the mob. Although he was notorious at the casino for his big winnings and even bigger losses, nobody seemed to mind because his presence there was great for business. This was also the mayonnaise and jello filled 1950s, so at the time Las Vegas was heavily segregated. But in 1955, Nat King Cole was allowed to stay at the hotel and perform, but Sinatra noticed that he would never see Cole in the dining room. Later, he found out that Nat King Cole was not allowed in the dining room, as were no other black people. So Sinatra threatened that if Nat King Cole and any other black people were not allowed to eat in the dining room with him, then he would fire each and every waiter and waitress at the resort. This is one of several examples of Frank Sinatra expressing great frustration to segregation and doing something about it with his star power. His star power culminated at the Sands in 1960 during the filming of Ocean's Eleven, where Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr., Peter Lawford, and Joey Bishop came together during that filming and all performed during a three-week stretch in the Copa Room. This informal group of stars would come to be known as the Rat Pack. And from there, the Sands became one of Las Vegas' biggest landmarks. But from there, it had also kind of hit its peak, and eventually it would come to close 30 years later in the 90s. But some could argue that it was because of the Sands that Las Vegas gained its fabulous star-studded reputation. So that's kind of why I wanted to make a recipe from the Copa Room and why I found this menu. So I guess without further ado, let's get back to the avocados. You're gonna slice your avocados in half and scoop them out. Then you'll dice the avocado up and add it into your crab mixture. And then you're just gonna fill the avocados with your mixture. And here is kind of your final product. You can see it presents nicely. It would look very fancy on a elaborate dish served in the 50s. 
It's got a lot of nice different colors and kind of contrasting elements, the pink and the radishes, and obviously the green and the avocado and the celery, and then the seafood. I don't have any makeup on, but I just made the stuffed avocados that were, may have been served in a similar way at the Copa room in the Sands in Las Vegas. And we're gonna try it out and see. Maybe, oh, gotta get a good bite here. I'm a little nervous about this one. I'm not a big fan of crab, but who knows? Maybe Frank Sinatra was onto something. But, get a good bite. Yeah, <laughs> that's really good. I don't know if I would have paid like $75 for it um, back in the 50s, but that's really good. It's really refreshing and light. There's like the seafood, but then it's balanced out by the citrus and kind of the avocado in there a little bit too. It's really good. Let's see what my boyfriend thinks. <laughs> So that's where I'm going to end our little rabbit hole history for this, uh, this part of the week. <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed this little recipe. I've been having a lot of fun making the recipes, so I figured I would make them a regular part of this channel. And um, of course, I'm going to have a full rabbit hole later this week. Hopefully it'll be out by Friday. Um, so yeah, look forward to that. Thank you again for watching and we will see you in the next video.